Grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The 9th of October, Friday of the week of Pentecost 18. This is St. Augustine writing from his confessions about his mother, Monica. Uh, she was 322, 387. Again, he was speaking of his mother. The day was now approaching when my mother, Monica, would depart from this life. You knew that day, Lord, though we did not. She and I happened to be standing by ourselves at a window that overlooked the garden in our courtyard of the house. At the time, we were in Ostia on the Tiber. We had gone there after a long and wearisome journey to get away from the noisy crowd and to rest and prepare for our sea voyage. I believe that you, Lord, cause all this to happen in your own mysterious ways. And so the two of us, all alone, were enjoying a very pleasant conversation, forgetting the past and pushing on to what is ahead. We were asking one another in the presence of the truth, for you are the truth what it would be like to share the eternal life enjoyed by the saints, which eye has not seen nor ear heard, which has not entered into the heart of man. We desired with all our hearts to drink from the streams of your heavenly fountain, the fountain of life. That was the substance of our talk, though not the exact words, but you know, O Lord, that in the course of our conversation that day, the world and its pleasures lost all attraction for us. My mother said, Son, as far as I am concerned, nothing in this life now gives me any pleasure. I do not know why I am still here, since I have no further hopes in this world. I do have one reason for wanting to live a little longer to see you become a Catholic Christian before I die. God has lavished his gifts on me in that respect, for I know that you have renounced earthly happiness to be his servant. So what am I doing here? I do not really remember how I answered her. Shortly, within five days or thereabout, she fell sick with a fever. Then one day during the course of her illness, she became unconscious, and for a while she was unaware of her surroundings. My brother and I rushed to her side, but she regained consciousness quickly. She looked at us as we stood there and asked in a puzzled voice, where was I? We were overwhelmed with grief, but she held her gaze steadily upon us and spoke further. Here you shall bury your mother. I remained silent as I held back my tears. However, my brother haltingly expressed his hope that she might not die in a strange country, but in her own land since her end would be happier there. When she heard this, her face was filled with anxiety and she reproached him with a glance because he had entertained such earthly thoughts. Then she looked at me and spoke, look at what he is saying. Thereupon she said to both of us, bury my body wherever you will. Let not care of it cause you any concern. One thing only I ask of you, that you remember me at the altar of the Lord, wherever you may be. Once our mother had expressed this desire as best she could, she fell silent as the pain of her illness increased. Then, on the ninth day of her sickness, the 56th year of her age and the 39th of mine, that religious and holy soul was freed from the body. The prayer anonymous. O Lord of the harvest, raise up, we pray thee, faithful and true men and women for the work of thy church, equip them for thy service, enrich them with thy grace, and send them forth in due time to gather fruit unto eternal life. For the glory of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.